Hello YouTube and welcome back. So this is our third video in a series on how to price options, uh, financial options. And if you haven't watched the other, uh, the other two, you probably should take a look at them first. But in today's video, we're going to look at the uh, risk neutral uh, approach to pricing a binomial tree. So in our last video, we looked at the portfolio approach to building binomial trees. And now we're going to look at a new method. This method is mathematically identical to our last method. Um, it's just maybe a little bit uh, easier to understand and uh, easier to build big binomial trees using this. Uh, but in truth, you can use either, either method that you want to. So risk-neutral valuation relies on the ideas that we developed in the last video of creating portfolios that contain a derivative and the underlying upon which the derivative depends. Now, it relies on the portfolio instruments having a level of dependency on each other, okay? And this is a very important thing in our pricing of derivatives is that we're trying to price our options, not just sort of say, what is the option worth, but we're really saying that if we know what the underlying is worth, if we know certain details of the underlying, which is the price of the underlying and the volatility of the underlying, and by that I mean how much it moves around, how sort of calm or crazy uh, an underlying it is, we're then able to price options on that underlying. So, um, and how we do that is that we always, we work with this uh, theoretical understanding that we're using a portfolio, we have a portfolio that it contains some amount of the the derivative or it contains the derivative and an offsetting amount of the underlying such that they're balanced in relation to each other and one is hedging the other and what that really means is that then the the risks the, the risk of the derivative is taken into account in the risk of the underlying right because we're saying Instead of saying we're pricing the derivative as a standalone, we're saying that if the value of the underlying is fair, then the value of the derivative has to be this, uh, because essentially they encapsulate the, the same risks, okay? So um, the, the two portfolio instruments thus have to have a level of dependency on each other. So we can price a derivative on an underlying in terms of that underlying, but we can't price another derivative uh, using the, the old underlying. The, the two items in the portfolio have to relate to each other in terms of risk and return. And this is a very powerful idea in finance because once we're able to do this, once we're able to have a portfolio with these two items that relate to each other and that we, we know the, the price of the first one, um, we then don't need to know the probability of the various price scenarios, right? We don't need to know the actual probabilities. We're able to work with what are called risk-neutral probabilities. And if you want to read more on that, um, you know, you can take a look at the textbook that we're working for, from, which uh, is linked to in the description below. But anyhow, this valuation approach only works when all of the instruments included in the valuation depend on the same underlying and thus are exposed to the same risks. We're pricing the derivative in terms of the underlying and risk is taken into account in both the price and the volatility of the underlying. Hopefully that makes sense. So here's our first formula that we're going to look at that we're going to use to price our option using this this new approach to building a binomial tree and it says f which is the value of the derivative is equal to e to the minus or t so the present value of and then we've got p times fu plus 1 minus p times fd now fu is the value of the payoff of the derivative in the up scenario and fd is the payoff of the derivative in the down scenario and then P is the risk neutral probability. So we can think of, it's maybe easier to think of P as the probability of an up move and therefore one minus P as the probability of the down move. Now, they're not actually real world probabilities as I just explained, they're risk neutral probabilities, but uh, you know, it's sort of sometimes easier to understand it in your head as just this idea of probability. So anyhow, what we're really saying here is that we're multiplying the probability of an event by the payout in that scenario 
and then the probability of the other event and the payout in that scenario, adding them up and present valuing them. And then we're saying that that is the fair value of our derivative. So f is the present value of the option in the up node times the probability of an up move on the acid plus um, the value of the derivative at the down node times the probability of a down move and their risk neutral probabilities just to be clear. So what we'll do now is we'll try and price the same derivative that we priced the last time uh, in, in the prior video, um, but this time we're going to use our, our new calculation. So it was an at-the-money call option where the underlying was trading at 50. There was m one month to expiration. Uh, interest rates were 5%, and we had two possible scenarios. One was that the underlying could go up to 70, and the other was that the underlying could go down to 30. So once again, our first step is just to draw the binomial tree and to fill in the information we know. So we know that the underlying is at 50 right now, so we have up there S0 equals 50. We know that in our two possible scenarios, in the up scenario, the ST equals 70, the underlying trades at 70, and in the downside scenario, ST equals 30. And then the call is worth 20 in the upside scenario, and it's worth zero in the downside scenario. And that's because it is the right but not the obligation to buy at 50. So when the underlying is at 70, that's clearly worth 20. And when the underlying is at 30, you would not want to buy at 50. You would just simply tear up the options contract, and it would expire worthless. So. The next step we have to do is we have to do our calculation for P, which was this risk neutral probability. So our formula for P is showing up on the screen right now, and it is P equals E to the 0 0.05, which is the 5% interest rate, times 1 over 12, and that's because this is for a holding period of one month, and so 1 out of 12 months. Uh, minus 0 0.6 over 1.4 minus 0 0.6. So 0 0.6 and 1.4 are U and D. Where did we get those from? Well, U is the amount that the underlying moved up, and D is the amount that the underlying moved down to get to the next steps in our binomial tree. So 50 multiplied by 1.4 gives you 70, and 50 multiplied by 0 0.6 gives you 30, right? So then U and D are 0 0.6 and 1.4. So we plug all of those numbers into our formula, and we calculate P, and it comes out to be 0 0.5052. So that's our first calculation done. Um, then all we have to do now is multiply it out through our other formula. So we multiply P, which is, uh, what was it, 0 0.5052, by the value of the derivative in the up node, which is $20, we multiply a 1 minus p by 0. Now, anything multiplied by 0 is 0, so we don't have to worry about that. And so it's really 0 0.5052 times 20, present valued, gives us the value of our derivative. And when we do that calculation, we come up with the same number that we calculated last time. So in, in both of our formulas, we end up with the same thing. So we've now learned about risk-neutral binomial trees. The problem is that we're still in this unrealistic world. I mentioned in our last video that, um, that it's probably quite unrealistic to say that we know the underlying will be at either 70 or 30 in the next month. And so in our next video, we're going to learn about multi-step binomial trees. And once we can make multi-step binomial trees, we're able to make this whole uh, pricing model an awful lot more reasonable. So hopefully by the end of the next video, you'll feel that we're getting to a point where this approach maybe makes a lot of sense to you. So uh, tune in tomorrow and we'll learn about uh, multi-step binomial trees. Bye.